Thank you, as always, for listening to Fluff and Crunch. In this episode, Chris and I pick up with what has become a tradition now. We do a year-in-review episode wherein we look back on things that happened in the uh, calendar years. It's coming to a close. Some of our goals, uh, our aspirations that we set out for ourselves at the beginning of the year and how we lined up and met those things or not. And in general, what we thought about our year and our year in gaming. Thanks, as always, for listening. All right, there we go. We are recording our year in review episode. How are you doing today, Chris? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm I'm pretty well, actually. Um, yeah, I am actually. That's good. You didn't catch the cold then? No, I didn't. I dodged the I dodged the funk that was moving through the house, and uh, I just said that I was invincible or I was invulnerable to that. Uh, that was my Marvel superheroes in invulnerability power. So. I'm good. Yes, I, I didn't manage that early this year. I was the one with the germs and the other two avoid it. So. Yeah, they are. Well. Oh, well. So how's your week been? And did you get any gaming in? Although I probably know the answer to this. Uh, we we play we played a, we played a board game. Unfortunately, the board game was so successful that we will be playing the board game next week. <laughs> Could be worse. I mean, it was, it's a, yeah, it's, it, it, we had we had good fun. We kind of yeah, we played a, another game that I've got on a Kickstarter that we hadn't got around to playing. Uh, and it was uh, it was good fun. Good. So yeah, exactly. It could be worse. Good. How about you? Well, we did another session of Kingmaker. It'll actually be our last for a few weeks. For the next uh, three set, next three Saturdays, we have either one someone's out, or I'm gone, or we're doing something a little bit different right before Christmas. So we won't play Kingmaker again until the last Saturday of December. But we had another session. We had virtually we had one combat encounter way at the end of the session and it was cool it was a lot of uh, a lot of in-character role-playing a lot of planning and and whatnot because the the story requires a lot of forethought you can't just you you don't just move from you know figurative room to room killing stuff yeah uh you had to politic and rub elbows with the locals and it was good it was uh it's uh it is starting to to blossom and the characters are growing and the story's growing and I'm able to add things in that connect to different characters. So it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Excellent. Yeah. But so, uh, as, oh, go ahead. I was going to say today, having, having done this last year, we're going to do it again, but this year we've been better because I, I, I went back and listened mm -hmm. twice to last year's episode where we did a review of 2022 and listening to it, it was very clear that we hadn't listened to our 2021 or 2022 preview episodes so i was like right i'm gonna do that so we are going to talk about how 2023 um the podcast our wishes our hopes gaming and all that stuff some awards at the end um but all for stuff that happened and then we will have a separate episode on looking ahead to 2024 yep so the last episode this will be the episode right before christmas uh and the last episode of the calendar year of the year will be our forward-looking forecaster plans for world domination for 2024. So you put this together. You listened to that episode. I think that's hilarious. You know, it's like we we yeah we should have listened to the original plan, but you did that. So let's let's go ahead and and work through our review of what we had planned for, and then what we did and what we think about the year 2023 in gaming and for our show. Yes, yeah, so the before we get into the show stuff, the initial stuff was what we thought we were going to do, kind of what we were thinking of doing, not necessarily gaming, but game related. And I was super vague about this. I, I had this line where I said, well, I was already planning on going. I knew I was probably going to finish part time. And I essentially said that either I would spend my day off a week writing something or I won't spend my day off a week writing something. I'll spend it doing other things, in which case I was chilling out and relaxing. So it was a win-win. Yes. Um, yeah, I I didn't really do any writing. Well, that's not entirely true. I did a tiny bit of writing when the World Builders program dropped, which I'm sure we'll get to that in a bit more detail. When the World Builders program dropped and Jeremy said, I'm going to write this big Aris thing I've been working on for months. I went, I'm going to beat you. And you did. And I did. I released a handful of pages of a kind of knockoff shadow rug cyberpunk thing, and I got that out first for no other reason than I could say I was first. Whereas Jeremy released something with quality, but Jeremy can talk. You could you could talk about that, but I was first. Yeah, you were. You were. You win. Uh, 
you know, the whole World Builders program, if you remember back or if you're not familiar, it, it was it was mentioned, it was implied, it was suggested, whatever, in late uh, 2021 for several months, actually. And for quite a while, people had been asking about it. Will there be a, a SRD for 2D20, so on and so forth? And it was finally released. And I released, I, I, I translated... Um, the, the Judas Priest adventure that I'd written for Conan for just, you know, for anybody's use, I translated that into the, uh, the, a draft of the rules. And then I spent, I spent like the first five months or for like from like February ish, late January, February through June writing Eris. Yeah. And, uh, it came in at just under a hundred thousand words. It's yeah, it's about 200 pages. It's 238 pages total. But that's with about thirty some odd pages of um, of reprints of tables and charts that are throughout the book and an appendix. So really, it's it's roughly two hundred pages. It's the most I've ever written in one thing, and um, but I did it. So that was a goal. You you then was like you you told me how much you've made from that, and you thought it was a small amount, and I didn't. I don't know whether you want to tell our listeners though. I'll say this. Because I I, uh, I figured that in, in polite company you never have to talk about your salary or how you voted, so I'm not going to do either of those things. But I uh, my wife and I are going on a cruise for our our 20th anniversary next year, and um, I have paid for some pieces and parts of that with what I've made. So I think one one thing worth thinking is that you only get half of correct. what it actually made. Correct. And I think when you think of it in that terms, I actually think I think that's a very respectable number that you, you made. Um, and when, so when you said that and when it's it's chump change and I was like, that's not chump change. I actually think that's very impressive. And well, I, I mean, like I, I want rolling in hundred dollar bills on an oversized heart shaped bed in a tacky hotel. That's I what I want. But you were never going to get that from I was an never expansion gonna get that to a community content thing for a role playing game that most, a lot of people don't play. So I actually thought that was a, I thought that was a very good number and I was very impressed. Thank you. Um, so I think, yeah, well done you. Um, because actually, yeah, you did, you did the quick start and then you carried on and wrote kind of like a primer and then you did go all the way through and you released like a fully realized, um, fully realized, you know, setting and ro and you could have just kind of gone, here's a short version of the rules and here's a short version of the setting, but there's quite a lot of setting in it. And, and then the rules are very detailed. It's as detailed as, uh, certainly it's more detailed than any of the other versions of ones I've seen a world builders mm -hmm. program Thank you. Um, and you had examples and stuff. So yeah, I think that was really good. And that was, yeah. the, you didn't even say you were necessarily going to do that, but because you just said you wanted to do some writing, but you, you yeah. not only did that, you, you did some other writing. I did. Uh, I had a, an adventure for Octon Cthulhu that Modifius bought. Um, that's Operation Talisman, and that's available on their site. And then I have written two Octon Cthulhu adventures, Jungle Rot, and now Island Getaway, that are on the World Builders program. I did those. I didn't myself. know you've done two on the World. So you've I written have. in total, you've written three things for Octon Cthulhu, yeah, and then a bunch of Aris stuff. Yeah, you had a proper year of writing stuff. Yeah, I wrote I, one I little quick start, and I like I I did do a five E campaign which I played through to the end, but we'll talk about that more later. Yeah. Which is kind of the only thing I said I was gonna do. So I did do what I said I was gonna do. So so I gaming I related, that. I you know we both did stuff, um, and uh, yeah, I but I I definitely I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue. One of the problems I've run into with Eris is I feel like I spent so much time so focused on it by myself that I poured so much of like creative energy into it that I, I now my heiress well is kind of dry. Oh, that's a shame. Cause yeah, you haven't well, actually played it. Have you, you haven't, you haven't I run, run it a at cons. It. I've run it at a local, I've run it at game stores. Um, but I am, I am currently not running it as my, um, my home system. I would really like to see you run it in. It, I'd run that, you know, your actual heiress 2d20. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. 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 I know. I gotta, I gotta think through that, but I'm going to remember this for the next episode so I can press you into say that you're going to. Okay. Do we'll table that and move that forward. Okay. So you had, so we, we both did some writing for world builders. So that's gaming related. Those were things so then, that we were goals and to varying degrees, we both did that. So that's yeah. bravo to us. 
So podcast wise, the the main actually there was only really one thing. We were very happy that a year before we'd said we wanted to do a Discord, and we did a Discord. And then I said, "Can't we do a YouTube?" And you said, "Yes, YouTube will be easy." And I thought you were talking out of your ass. And literally, you dropped the episode where we said you said we're going to do. It. You said well, I could drop this episode. Actually, I don't know if you did, but you did. You everything since then has been on YouTube, which I still think we forget most of the time. Um, Here's the trouble. We, you know what? I, I realized I am very much a uh, ready, shoot, aim kind of person. I will, like, I'll get an idea and I would rather, I'll go do it and then look at what happened and then figure out. I mean, there, and then there are some things that I'm very methodical and like forward planning. With this, I, I have realized now that I know, I knew nothing, nothing about how to do a YouTube channel outside of just uploading videos. And so, I'll talk more in detail in our, our forecast episode about what we're going to do with the YouTube channel. But you're right. We, we plan to create a YouTube channel. We did create a YouTube, YouTube channel. Now we're going to have a fully operational battle uh, YouTube channel for 2024. It is, it is funny looking at which, like, which videos get more views because there's, to some extent, there's very, very little pattern to it. No, you're right. I mean, there are, you know, there are... It, the only one you could, in fact, the, the one perfect example of how there's no pattern is where we did the captain's log thing. Uh, the story, the, the, the stuff about how captain's log works, okay, it gets quite a few views. Yeah. And like, so I think with Jim Johnson, loads of views. That's probably, is, I guess, in that's our biggest video because that one of them way totally more makes sense. We've got 395 views on that, 41 on our review of it, normal numbers. Then when we did an episode on how to create characters for it, 91 views oh that's pretty but then we're down to 31 for the ship creation yep but then we go up to 33 for the first act of how to do it and we dropped it now this is the bit yep. i expect right act two 14 all right so people who didn't like us doing our first episode yeah we'll drop the second but then we get more views for the third episode it's so weird it's just so so there's strange. no pattern there. i mean some of this is you know are, are there people who watch the podcast and also watch the youtube are there people who only watch the youtube and never watch we have we i don't think we have any way of knowing nope. that these are things that were, were so let's let's table that we we yeah, said we were so, going to do it we did it and, and we in 2024 um, here's the teaser we're going to do it better <laughs> we're going to do it more effectively so but it's it's quite funny to look and see that yeah. uh, you know there are things here uh, that people have listened to um, yeah. I mean I don't know how many comments we ever get you know what I I money. you very have all few. the stats so very few but th like again that's that's something we'll we'll talk about in the because I do have plans um but yeah that's one of the things when i try to put stuff on youtube i found very quickly that you know you get youtube is very good at giving you a lot of stats and most of the stats are not not nice reading right the, the, the drop off into an episode oh, yeah. you're like oh are. wow people watched it for a minute and 32 seconds yeah that's and you're just like Ugh. and we're I gonna fix found, that i think why well, i stopped very quickly putting stuff on youtube because it was it was quite depressing yeah. I didn't, I, you know, on a, on a blog, it was much easier. I could see how yeah. many people have read it and where they're from. Brilliant. I like those numbers. This is how many people switched off after five minutes. I don't want to, I don't want to know that. It's, it's awful. So what else, what else was on our, what's the next thing on our. Uh... Uh, so the next thing we talked about is actually what we thought w w was games wise. So I think what we thought was what we were interested in or what we thought was going to happen is games wise. So we talked a bit about like we not uh, in our done. game. Are, do you mean in our games? No, I mean, mean like uh, the two, gaming so real the, large, the, the, the game world at large. So okay. We talked quite a bit about the world builders program. Um, and it actually they did everything we wanted. They did drop it very, I think they dropped, they mentioned it and dropped the SR. No, we had the SRD. They said in sort of January time, what was going to happen. And they did the thing exactly what I wanted. They gave us a date ahead of time. So they didn't kind of go, um, it's available today, which yeah. like I said, what I wanted was some time. Now they didn't give us lots of time. I think it was a few weeks, but there was time for people to, you know, finish the put the finishing touches on things they wanted to release for me to knock something up in the time between the announcement yeah. and when it came out so i could look so that that was good i would have liked a longer lead in i you know i was hoping they'd say in january it's going to be out in march and have two months to work on something decent instead i think we had about a week or two weeks it's all right but at least we got some time um because i would have liked more time and i would have spent it you know doing stuff um but they did that and we have the world builders program now and I mean, it's not exactly set in the world of light. Uh, and I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's the, I, I don't know. What I'm going to guess, I, I'm going to take a guess at this, that there are, 
they're, they're, writing is hard. That's not a guess. Writing stuff is yeah, really hard. True. Coming up with a foggy idea that really sounds energizing and gets you excited is relatively easy. Doing the hard work of making sense of it so that someone can make sense of it when they read it, when you're not in the room and they don't know who you are is really, really hard. And my guess is that there is a, there's a small number of people. I mean, 2D20 is a niche system, unfortunately. It's a niche system. And beyond that, there are, there's a small share of people who are playing 2D20 who are serious enough about it to consider writing using it like writing for not just themselves. Yeah. And so of that number, it, it just keeps shrinking down to like that yeah. number versus who actually decides, hey, I'm going to do this to who actually starts doing it, to who actually finishes something, to who then doesn't get like, you know, crazy anxiety or um, imposter syndrome or something like that. Or they look at what they write and they, they keep trying to perfect it so that they never release it. You know, the, you end up down to just this tiny number of people um, the one thing I am surprised about um, is that it doesn't seem that Modiphius really does much to, and I could be wrong. Maybe I'm missing all of this, but I'm on their email list. I, I, I visit their Discord. I, something that I've been surprised about is that Modiphius has, doesn't seem to have done much to support or promote or raise the profile of world builders, period. They've mentioned in a couple of releases some of the things that people have put up there. They've done a yeah. little bit of that. But it just surprises me that they don't promote this more. Here's an odd thing. When you go to drive through and you click on Publishers, Modiphius, and then it gives you at the top of the screen all these tiles of their different systems, find World Builders. That's weird because normally it doesn't have the community. Well, it has the hot. Yeah, it does World have... Here's it the gets problem. It's standard hottest community titles thing, but yeah, you're right. Well, it doesn't well, have a separate world. Well, what happened? No, there, there. If you go, if you go to Drive Through's homepage and you click on Publishers, you click on um, Modiphius, the top of the page, you have all these little rectangles of their different systems. World Builders is black on black. You have to mouse over it in the upper left hand corner of that collection to even see it. At least how it renders. That's how it shows up on my screen. I was going to say when I, when I do it, it comes. Oh, he has got world builds. There, yeah, mine. Yeah, maybe it's a. What are you looking at this on? Anyway, point is, um, I, I, I'm just, I'm surprised if, if they want to promote the the game system and they want to promote people to, you know, encourage people to get into it, there needs to be content. And so I don't understand why they, why they don't. I don't understand why they don't promote it. I'm not saying that from like self serving standpoint. Like I expect Modifius to to pimp my stuff that I put up. There. Yeah, they are I, making I think... money off of it, but. It just seems odd that it, that World Builders was like released. They said they were going to do these monthly things. They haven't. I think um, you do have like to look two. at the lack of stuff on there, though. So, but it's a it is out. it like a chicken in the egg kind of issue? I think it partly is. So, like DMs Guild was big because loads of people wrote stuff for it. So other people then bought it, and then loads of people yep. went, "I'm going to write for it." Uh, and then people knew that, like, you could see what was selling, and so people could do more of that. Now. Yep. I still think another big problem with this. So, for example, on DMs Guild, most of the stuff I've released have been small things and mostly rules. So I released, you know, new archetypes and new races. And okay. I pretty much it. That's what I've released on, on DMs Guild. There's stuff like that. Stuff that I could think about the rules and I don't have to think about the setting. Now, straight away, they put in a thing that basically said anything that you put mechanics wise is, is, is open source. Yeah. That anyone else can take it which straight away I think would have put a lot of people going, oh, well, I was going to write a cyberpunk rule set with hacking rules and put that on, knowing full well that someone else could then take your hacking rules and put that into their you know, cyberpunk. I don't, I don't, I mean, I think that, that, I think that could be it. I think another issue, it's possible that some of the most popular properties for 2 Day 20 are things you can't write for. You can't write for Dune. You can't I, write I, for Star yeah. Trek. You can't I write for- think that's a Really, you can't really write for issue. any of the licensed properties, yeah. and I, I'm not gonna. I'm not complaining about that. That's just, but that is a, a significant impediment to people jumping on there and 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 uh, sharing I, things for. Um, I I think you're spot on there reasons. because after the time, I don't know, we've got between nine and six months of it being out. I can't remember how long. There's still only twenty nine products on it. That's right. tiny. Yeah, it's nothing. And of I mean, those twenty nine like, that, products, that's, that's a 
like a that's bunch a of small those ball books. publisher. That's a that's an individual with a small ball yeah. list on on uh, on uh, DMs Guild. Um, I mean, they do vary massively in size. You've got you know sure. your two hundred page Aris thing, and then you've got other things which are you know like and, and there was yeah. a bunch of people who basically just reformatted the SRD and released that up. I'm glad people stopped doing that very quickly. Well, I think it was um, it was done and it's useful, but, but it's done. They did do it. It does exist. We have an SRD now. We can't keep complaining that it doesn't exist, uh, and it's it's there. Um, yep. I guess for next year we can ask about what we can do better. All right. Um, so then we did have a talk about we got it the wrong way round. We thought that co we knew Cohors was coming out, but I think we were the under the impression that Cohors was going to release in 2024, um, and we would like. I thought literally on the thing I said we'll have a we'll probably have the PDF. We might not have the book. Well, we have neither. We had a quick start. And and we had a Kickstarter, which thinking yep. about it, I have no idea how well that Kickstarter did. Oh, it, no, um, it funded. It's and it's done. Too. Oh, it funded, but I mean, like how? So yeah, how well? So and, and I don't remember exactly because it, it was it was fuzzy wuzzy. Like there was all that announcement stuff about cohorts, and then it seemed to just disappear for a really long period of time. Yeah. And then came information about the Kickstarter. The Kickstarter happened. That's the end of it. And it, it felt, I mean, we don't, obviously, we have no idea what's going on behind the scenes in terms of Modifius's, you know, product, internal writing and, and production. But it seemed like that Cohors was going to happen and then Dreams and Machines. And it, it's, it's turned into the, the flip side of that. Yeah. So Cohors, we got 200,000 on their Kickstarter with a 50,000 gold. So not terrible, but also not set in the world alight. Um, but instead, we got we got a load of stuff for Dreams Machines. We got the quick start for Dreams Machines. Then we got a starter box. And then yep. we actually got two books, yep. all of which released. So, yeah, kind of almost the complete opposite. I, to me, Dreams and Machines was the risky product that needed a Kickstarter to see if there was even interest yep. in it. And Cohors had the ready built in audience, which, you know, we've done that. I mean, yeah, again, we don't know how Dreams and Machines is doing the the two separate books are in the top 30 on drive through right which is okay but then i'm looking and seeing that like that's still below the stars without number that's only on drive through though there could be people ordering it directly from Modifius. i know we it's the know literally that. the only thing i can look at it's the only way i've got i've known things so um, but it, it's out so we have that stuff and we will at some point do a review of the of the starter box um yep. i have been put off buying the the books basically by the price of the two books the two yeah. books plus poaches yeah we is, talked uh, about is, that it's money so i, I so, haven't gone for it yet, but it so modifius good. puts out and we had some guesswork and what it seemed like modifius is then in gaming world writ large i see for us modifius is is putting out or is in the process of has made progress to these these two entirely new um 2d20 lines the other big thing and i don't want to talk about it much but it must be mentioned the other big thing that I remember from 2023 in gaming is the great OGL war of winter uh, 2023, early 2023. Yeah. Which and Watsi's is... seeming uh, strategic <laughs> withdrawal. But frankly, I honestly, with D&D, &D, whatever it's called that's coming out in 2024, I have absolutely no doubt that Watsi will do something else stupid to piss off a bunch of people. I have absolutely no doubt that they will do that. They will do something clumsy and ham-handed and they will, there will be this giant stupid social media row and people will say, I'm gonna go make my own system and then whatever. But that's the other yeah, big so that, thing. Yeah, that did happen. That there yeah. have other people have gone and announced their own version of the OGLs. Other people have announced their own systems. Yeah. Um, but that's all stuff that's going to be happening. So we, we can talk about that a bit in our looking ahead. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah, kind of at the time it was a, essentially it faded away very quickly into 23, as far as we were concerned, because they no. just said, well, we're not doing that. It's like so um, many other things on social media. It be for, for the, for the, the, you know, the Twitter trolls and, and the like, it becomes this breathless everything until they move on to the next breathless everything. Well, I mean, it was great for people's YouTube views and hopefully uh, we never sink into that chasing the chasing the hits yeah. with the inflammatory D&D uh, &D is dead. Oh, better OG yet, what I love, it's the, uh, the the YouTube thumbnail with the person all, the yeah. stupid look on their face. I, <laughs> I hate those, I'll never do it's those. Just, yeah, the, the, <laughs> the worded things that you can put in a thing. <gasps> 
And we've been All a right. cute way. Yeah, it'd be like if we did a 2D20 is dead and did that as our th- right, know, right, as a, right. As the headline. And we have like bad pictures Definitely. of us with our eyes bugged out and X's yeah. over our eyes on the thumbnail. Um, so how about we, our gaming? Oh, I just want to what? get one thing in. Well, we did also talk about what they were going to release for Star Trek. You got your ship book, which you were happy about. Yeah, very. And, and Captain's um, Log I, I, came out of nowhere. Yeah. And that's the, that was the crazy one. I was hoping for a Picard, but I didn't get that. But I got lower decks, which I'm happy with the lower decks. But but yeah, Captain's Log, which is was was great. It's probably the best thing that they released all year, I would have said. Um, and literally came out of nowhere. <laughs> like, it's just crazy. Yeah. And we got a lot of episodes out of that. So yes, and probably did. more in the future. It was oh. uh, yeah, it was really good stuff. We'll do that. So thank you for Captain's Log, whoever had that yeah. idea. Brilliant. Agreed. One. So now, what about uh, what about our gaming? We had pl- you had this plan, I remember, for this multi GM five E campaign in a homebrew world. Very interesting, and it came to yeah. I mean, okay. it's almost yeah. It's, I, it's one of those things where I'd like to do a whole episode, but it's not worth it. Um, essentially, we started off really well. The by the end of January, I think we'd all run our, our introductory sessions. By February, we'd all done two or three sessions. Um, and then Scott never ran another session for the rest of the year. Um, me and Brian were then kind of doing sort of we'd do one of us would do two episodes, the other person would do two episodes. And then as we got close to the summer, I knew what was going to happen. I knew we would have a massive break over the summer. We wouldn't be able to play. And I was like, right, I want to, I want to wrap up my game before it just dies. And so I managed to wrap up my story um, pretty happy. It was, you know, I was happy with how it finished. I was happy with the progress that I did, the fact that we played through this campaign. Um, but it's, uh, essentially, Brian then didn't manage to finish it, and we never went back to it. So These things you know, happen. This, is, this is why I am the forever GM, because I'm the only one that will commit to actually doing it. Uh, you know, it's, we, we could talk about that. Maybe that's an episode for 2024, yeah. like navigating the, the, the waves and the eddies of life as they impact yeah. your gaming schedule. Um, and then we haven't, I haven't done any more role playing since then. I think it's a combination yeah. of scheduling meeting and having played so much role playing over the first half of the year, the guys wanted to do more board gaming. Yeah. And in fact, there was a month and a half where just I didn't even see Scott yeah. because he was busy with family stuff, like you saying, life going away. I'm done. Um, so I, uh... I, yeah. So, yeah, didn't didn't happen. That was that was my role playing for the year. About three quarters of my year, aside from a one off here and there, was as a player, which is the first time in a long time, uh, in a uh, uh, a five e campaign, and um, that is now done. And now I am running Kingmaker, the old uh, uh, Pathfinder um, adventure path, but I'm using Castles and Crusades. And we can talk about that more in the future. But yeah, my gaming has actually been very consistent this year, which has been nice. But um, not a lot to report because one of one, you know, 75, almost 80 percent of the year was taken up by one thing with me in one capacity. You must have run something in at the start of the year. You weren't you weren't playing 5 at the start of the year. Yeah. Really? Yeah. We finished up Octon Cthulhu at the end of last year. And then as always happens during the holiday season, we ran a bunch yeah. of one offs just because, you know, one person was gone. And, two, and when I was running Octung, I had three players. So if one person was down, it was like we, we just weren't we would run, run something else. Um, you know, a one-off here and there. I ran a number, like, as I said earlier, I ran a number of sessions of Aris at cons, game stores, so on and so forth. And um, now, okay, so outside of our gaming, we talk about gaming writ large and our gaming. Uh, what other, what other things that are related to gaming are worth mentioning that that were connected to this this last year? Uh, I've say I, there's quite a lot of other role-playing game things I've read that I haven't mm-hmm. get to play. Like a lot of things that. I've come across, you know, because even when I am not role playing and all I've played this year is 5e, and those are the classic things that I've probably played 5e with books that are years and years old. But I have still bought other things and I've read other things. So, um, yeah, Fabular Ultima I quite enjoy, which is a, it's weird. It's based on sort of Japanese computer games, but turned into a tabletop role playing game. That's quite cool. Um, I have actually got Dragon Bane, but I'm looking at it in its shrink wrap and thinking, yeah, we need to talk about some free league stuff because then I might actually open things. Um, one big thing for me this year is that the D and D film came out and and was really enjoyable. Yeah, it was agreed. it was a lot of fun. It had a lot of call outs, you know, stuff from that was familiar. They didn't ruin the property. It wasn't, you know, they weren't taking the taking the piss out of things. They were 
they were treating it with love and attention and clearly enjoyed it. And the people in it seemed like they were having a lot of fun and they had lots of good stuff in it. So I, that was really good. And I am hoping that that does mean we will get, I think at the moment they're saying there probably is going to be a scene. It didn't make as much money as I was hoping. No. But then lots of films this year have done terribly. So yeah. actually, I think if you look at how much money it made this year, okay, you know, it didn't do Barbie or Mario numbers, um, which would have been a lot nice. of horrible films this year, though. But yeah, I agree. Yeah. I'm glad D and D as a film, you know, it, I, it, you know, it, I'm sure it pleased lots of folks like us. I'm sure it pleased lots of younger gamers, and hopefully, it, it exposed the, the idea of gaming to more people. So yeah, I thought that was that was a good a good a high point I think for 2023. Um, the Marvel game did actually come out and was massively improved. I kind of feel like all yeah. of that work I did crunching the numbers <laughs> maybe they during listened. 2022 um, was worth it because you know, I did a lot of sitting there looking at numbers and and sending all this feedback, thinking it you know is there any point to doing all this? Yeah. And a good chunk of the stuff they had listened. The, the game is now playable um it's fun i've managed to run it with like a bunch of we're not a bunch but i managed to run it with you know some people that were like sort of i know they're four or five or something um and it, it's a decent game i don't mm. is it the best marvel game ever i don't know maybe that's a whole episode that's yeah, arguable terms. yeah whatever um but it it's the current marvel game and it and it's playable whereas the beta was not right it was awful so yeah that that was good um i don't think it's been it's not exactly been a vintage year for gaming. It seems like, you know, that not a huge yeah. amount of awe inspiring stuff has come out. And a lot of it has been, I feel like a lot of people have been waiting for this D and D thing. That's going to be out in another year. Yeah. I mean, like what is this other that. version going to be rules wise, canon wise, how is format wise? Yeah, I agree. One thing I have noticed on, I have spent more time this year on, on, on well on reddit really then what you, it used to be the main forum thing i was always on is um rpg.net forums you know it's kind of an echo chamber of stuff but mm -hmm. i find it very hard to navigate that now you, you go on to it and they used to cap they used to cap a, a thread at a certain size at which point it would die and you would have to start a new one now they just seem endless so oh. you see these things and it's got like a hundred pages and you think well i'm not going to read through a hundred pages yeah. of that's hard. It's almost like joint, like like stepping into a, a series, like a television series yeah. that's really long running. You're like, I don't even know where to start, so I'm not going to. Well, that's why I struggle with Discord. Like if I go onto the Modifius Discord, it, it, you're always in the middle of a conversation. Yeah. It's, you know, there is a thread function, but no one uses it. So I find it very hard to work out what's going on. Yeah. Reddit's great. There's always new posts all the time. Um, and you can see very, you know, they're never crazy long as so you can read through it and, you know, you can throw in a thing very easily and respond to different people. I and mean, that's the other problem with like a forum. When you respond to someone where your response appears might appear, you know, nowhere near where that yeah. person, you respond on Reddit, it appears straight to us and they get notified. So it, it works quite well. Um, but I have noticed that, that you still get that, like, you know, the most, the most popular thing on, on, on Reddit is always going to be recommend me a system for X, Y, or Z. Yeah. And you've still always got the thing of, Every, everyone hates D and D, which is funny. Um, and everyone always just recommends their favorite system. Sure. And the flavor of the month, definitely at the moment, is uh, is uh, is is Blades in the Dark. Co according to most people on Reddit, Blades in the Dark is the solution for everything. everything. So whether it's whether it's fancy, oh, you can definitely use Blades in the Dark. You know, someone's like Cyberpunk. Oh, you can do Blades. There's a there's this oh, yeah. hat. Blades, Blades in the, in the Dark. dark. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mork Borg's another one. Oh, Mork Borg's amazing. Oh, and, and Cyborg and Pirate Borg. And you're like, whatever. Some of these probably do work in a very specific, it's, it's exactly like Fate and Power by the Apocalypse five years ago. Those things work very well for that, for a very particular purpose, for a very particular kind of thing. And But people suggest them for everything. Right. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm not there suggesting 2D20 for everything, just for some things. Right. Well, we talked about that. I mean, that's that whole idea of system setting and story. Like the, the system needs to support the setting and the story, the vibe that you're trying to establish. Um, uh, have you got any other game? You don't look massively into other gaming, do you? you, you no, no, I don't. I mean, and, and it's tough because, especially, I mean, like I said, the first half of this year was I was chest deep in Eris, writing and writing and writing. And um, so there have been times I, I'll spend time on, on Reddit, but I have not in a long time. Um, I should get back to that, but anyway. So before we get to our final category thing, which Jeremy is apparently very excited about, I, I did want to briefly talk about just the, the non-gaming completely. Um, 
parts of a year. Um, my blog is basically, anyone who cares is, is basically died. I, I managed to find a way to move it off the paid platform and back onto the free platform it was once on. But I just really don't have the time or the inclination to write about it. I yeah, think pretty much everything I would write about goes into this podcast um, or I throw it up on, you know, things on something like Reddit, writing about stuff. Definitely my blog had got to the point I was writing for the sake of writing or I was writing chasing views. Yeah. Um, and when I wrote stuff that I was interested in, I mean, this is where it's different. I can talk about something I'm interested in with you and we have a conversation. When I was writing just for myself, if I was, you know, you write something and then how do you know it's well received? Well, you go and see how many views it's got. And when no one reads it, you're kind of like, oh. You have no idea. Pointless. Was it right. was it a, a promotional problem or was it a content problem? Yeah, that's yeah. These are the kinds of things you, you have to learn if you're going to put stuff out there and you want to try to get good things in front of people. You have to write something good, but then it's how do you get it in front of people? That's that's yeah. tough. Whereas here we kind of have that thing. Oh, I think that was a good idea. I think that was a good idea. Okay, that's off saying to other. But then we totally do have the Discord and people do say, I oh, I liked that episode. Yeah. Um, I've you know, the one we did on canon characters, someone did say, I really like that. I'm yeah. gonna do something, you know. So that's so we get responses on things. So it's not just us. Um, you know, we can talk to other people about it, so that's good. Um, outside completely unrelated to gaming. Uh actually I have to say 2023 was a really, really good year. Having finally been. got past all of the utter crapness of COVID, I finally got to go to Florida, which I know isn't your thing, but oh, yeah, um, I like we, Florida too. We've been planning on going to Disney World since the start of 2020 was when we booked our Florida trip. Three years later, after COVID stopped being a thing, uh, we finally got to Florida, had an amazing night. I absolutely loved Galaxy's Edge, um, just feeling like I was actually in Star Wars. I yeah. literally felt like I had gone to another planet and I was there and it was amazing. I've since converted like a good chunk of my, what is kind of my study slash middle room into like a Star Wars room, That's which excellent. I'm very happy with. Um, and it was other stuff. Mika turned 14. We did a whole bunch of stuff for her birthday. Kids. And he's now gone into high school because we start high school here at 11, not right. 15. Like you do. Um, and I've gone back full time. But overall, yeah, this year has been a really, really good year. So yay to 2023. Yeah, me too. Actually, 2023, I mean... Uh has been has been good my, our, my older daughter got married uh which is freaky and weird but how she, many camels did you get i got no camels this was oh. not this this was a this was a no this was a nice midwestern boy uh they don't they don't they don't give up camels or cows or anything like that nothing along those lines but um yeah it's good it's good and um and otherwise work's been good my my you know work and and whatnot and uh yeah it's it's actually it's been a good year that is all I have to say about that. Well done, 2023, for there you not go. sucking, unlike some of your previous. That's right, some of your predecessors. Yeah. Which we're now on to awards. I think this yeah. is a clever, clever way to cap things off as we review I, our I, year. We, wait a minute. Uh, I'm going to go for this one. I'm going to go for the best resource I used for a game. Um, the best resource I use. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use a category. The best resource I used for a game this year was AI. Now, I know it's a dirty word in lots of places, sure. but, you know, I, I use chat GPT to generate me like riddles mm -hmm. um, and, and Ooh, puzzles clever. and adve like whole adventures, which was really good. So, you know, literally just say, I want a dungeon that's like this and it would theme me a bunch of rooms. And then I took that and altered. I never took what it gave me and just ran with that. I always took what it gave me or I would do three or four attempts on a piece together. But that saved me tons of work. Yeah. Um, and I really like the use of AI for art. Now, funny, we did an episode on this earlier in the year, and everything I created at the time was awful. <laughs> you've you've seen, gotten a lot better. Well, it's just not me. It's just the the soft. The, well, it's the software essentially. The AI yeah. has got so much better that now, if you give a half decent prompt to one of these things, it will yeah. generate you stuff that looks quite good. Now, is that quite good because it's ripping off existing people's art? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sticking this in like a you know a thing or put on a website this is for my own personal use for if i want to what a character looks like yeah. i don't have to trawl through the internet or, or trawl through pinterest trying to find a character image which suits what i want i can just use some ai created stuff so that's great for like npcs yeah. and that's great for characters um and that's a really good resource so yeah, yeah. AI, I think we need I to. I think that we but, need to do. Yeah. We need to revisit AI early in 2024 because I've got a lot more experience with it doing different kinds of things. So yeah, that's a good award. AI could be controversial for some people, but it's not like it's you know 
something to ignore. I think that's a that's a good one to hand out. Done then. Okay, so my first award, and really this is my biggest, I'm going to give to the, the 2D20 SRD. And you said it. You said that that thing has no business being, and no SRD has any business having that much detail, that much explanation, that many options. Every other SRD I've seen is pretty much the most streamlined version of, of, a, of rules, and that's it. The Modifius 2D20 SRD provides you with commentary and optional rules and optional ways of approaching things and all kinds of content and GM uh, ideas, like 20 some odd pages of GM ideas that um, apply to, well, I mean, it, it, it makes sense because 2D20 is a, is a common core mechanic with some common uh, features like the meta currencies, but it's a little bit too significantly different in every single game it's used on. And so it makes sense that an SRD would be more expansive. So I, I absolutely think that that SRD deserves a big award because, because of what it has enabled me to do. And also, as I thought about other things I might want to do at my own table with the system or with things I might produce, it's given me lots of ideas I'm not just reproduce. I would not be just reproducing the same mechanic and hanging content on it. The SRD is, I, I think, gives me enough to think about. So I, I think that's outstanding. So there's an award. There's my first. I'm going to combine one. So be best game I played or GM'd. I'm going to cheat to put these together. Now, realistically, the reason I couldn't really give this award, and I've just realized why I can, you is can't? because I, I played in, I can. Oh. Um, I played in a D and D game, but Scott only ran two sessions, which and they were fun. And Brian only ran, you know, he ran a bunch of sessions. And the only thing I ran this year really was was five E, yeah. um, and it was all right, but it got very railroady at bits. But then I realised, no, there was another game that I both played and ran this year, which was Captain's Log. Yes, and we've mentioned it again. And I'm giving Captain's Log an award because yeah. of Captain's Log. Me and Jeremy were able to play. Star yeah. Trek over the internet. Uh, and it was, it was well, by the time we got near the end, it was good fun. When Jeremy got over his, when you got over your angst. <laughs> You're like, right. Am I, <laughs> am I doing this right? What are we, I don't understand what's going on. It was oh, like, look, you're so meant true. to be having, don't worry about it. You're overthinking this. Let's just have fun and we'll get a story out of it. Yeah. Um, and we got a story and a good chunk of our crew, the the and well, the red shirts died. They were, they were meant to die. That's and, and they did die. And our main you know, character survived. I, I am going to jointly uh, offer up that award uh, with you. Captain's Log is, if you have any interest in Star Trek, Captain's Log is really outstanding for a bunch of different reasons. If you have, if you have a friend who is somewhere else and you would like to play a game with, you can do that just like we did, and it totally works. It absolutely works. You don't need maps, you don't need minis, you don't, you don't need any kind of, you don't need to learn how to use a VTT, you can just talk. That's it, and it worked. And um, yeah, Captain's Log, I, for, when I run Star Trek Adventures again, at some point in the future, Captain's Log will be a major planning and story contribution feature. I'm gonna treat that book like an AI to pump out other ideas and context that will go around the campaign that I'm running and the things that my players are doing. So yeah, hats off to that big time. You got another one? I do. I have one more. Uh, uh, I'm trying to, I've, I've, I might have to give two because I can't decide which. We which don't have to be to. even. No, uh, I mean, in terms of I've got an award, but I can't decide who to go it to. So I'm going to have to just give it to two things because I can't narrow it down to one. Okay, I'm going to give an award to the best game that I, for the best game that I GM'd. It is not to me, it's to the game experience, which is a product of what I did, but it's also a product of players. Does that make sense? No, but I'm sure when you not say what it is, it will. I'm not trying to award myself something. The, I'm going to say that the the, the best... The couple of games, and I'm, I'm smooshing them together. I ran a few sessions of Aris at a local game convention over the summer. And it was fascinating, enlightening, and gratifying to see what people did with the system and the story, the game that I had created. And that there were ideas that I had had about how 
players could use spells and talents flexibly at the table using momentum and other features of the system. And I hoped that's what people would do. Now, I had no guarantee that people would see that in my game, but people did. And people did without me coaxing them to. They, they recognized like, oh, I can, I can do more than just the, the, the power says I do this, so I do that and that's it. Um, creative use of facets of characters is really what I hope was one of the major things that I hoped for in the system. And it was gratifying to see people able to do that. Um, people I'd never met and who'd never, you know, had just decided to take a chance on this game and me for four hours at a game convention. So those were really, um, they were a lot of fun. How about you? You said you can't decide who, so just go for it. Yeah, I was going, so I've got, I've, I've written one for like the best game I read. So as much as I like, you know, as much as I like Captain's Log, um, because as loads of really cool stuff, I yeah. have actually used that. So this is something I've just read and not played, but I can't separate it as two. Um, one is I've previously mentioned this, this very strange game called Fabula Ultima, which I had not heard of um, till the start of the year. And it suddenly popped up and I actually, it's really hard trying to get hold of the actual book. Mm -hmm. It's like one, in fact, I had to get it. I think I had to get it through Modiphius, the actual book, because I'm going to have to get the PDF online. Um, but it is this, it's, it's trying to do a role-playing game like Japanese computer role-playing game, but it does, I think it does a really good job and it just reads really well. Um, it has nice kind of this anime kind adjacent art. Um, and it's just a really well-produced, well-put-together book. Hmm. Um, and there's more stuff coming out for it. Uh, and it just, I'm, I'm looking forward to play. It's a relatively straightforward system. It's like, it's quick to play but has some tactical element, like the players can bounce things off each other and work together. So it just, it seems like it will be good in play. Um, and the other one is something I've literally only discovered in the last week, which I remember seeing on Kickstarter and I didn't back it. It's always what happens. I back stuff that's rubbish and I miss the stuff that's good. Um, it's called Outgunned. It's a, it's basically an action movie role-playing game. So like Feng Shui, if you take away all okay. of the weird Eastern stuff. But along, it's a, again, it's a very simple system. But reading through it, they released a second book called Action Flicks. And for their stretch goals, they basically did, right, well, you can have um, cyberpunk things or like uh, they didn't literally didn't do fantasy. It was like different things. So uh, cyberpunk. And then they did they literally did Ghostbusters. And then they did like um, things like Blade and the not Twilight films, the Underworld films. And so yeah. there's a whole bunch of these. And each time you read one, it's, it suggests a bunch of like characters that would be good for this thing. And it name drops a bunch of the films you should watch. And it's clearly very well researched. I just remember reading through like there's a it's not they don't call it the scoundrel, but it's basically the scoundrel character in their in their space opera ripoff. They call Star Raiders. Um, and the characters listed like these are the the like the pinnacle of things, including relative obscure TV shows that I've watched that like the only people I know that watch is like me and Mika. And they name drop this character. It's like these people clearly know their stuff. Yeah. And they've created a thing which will do action hero kind of films really good and i'm reading through one of the things and it's got like john matrix from commando and i was like oh this is the, you know That's these cool. are the, this is good stuff in this and so just reading through the book has been an absolute pleasure i'm really looking forward to running it um and the funny thing is both of these games are by italians both hmm. of these completely separate companies completely separate games which happen to be both happen to be from italy so the two best things i've read this year are, are both italians i i were reading through it and i have to think like the way they've written it, this is this is like, you know, it's written in a very informal style to get you into it, as opposed to a lot of role playing books are very dry. Sure. And yet it's not their first language. So interesting. I, yeah, well done. Very impressed. Let's um, do this. Looking, let's looking let's in early 2024. Let's let's do a, a review of that. Let's look into it in, in more depth because it sounds like it deserves some attention. And especially I, when you've got writers who are not writing from, you know, the English language as their original and they're publishing in the English language, you know, Hey, if we can point a spotlight at them and that would be I'm cool. hoping outgunned will be what I run before Christmas, partly because I'm thinking, Hmm, I need a one shot thing near Christmas. Oh, wait a minute. Christmas action film. I can do die hard or I can do lethal weapon or yeah, I can join can. them together. So just like, yes, that's that's my plan. They won't be rescuing Santa this year. They'll be shooting up some terrorists in a high rise building while one of the characters says, I'm too old for this shit. Well, yeah, someone has to. Yes, that's the that's my plan. That's like the start of my plan. I don't know how I'm going to get this done, but I've got a week. Be fine. So overall, like you said, 
thank you. 2023 has been good. Um, no year is perfect, so it's not worth getting upset about. Uh, but 2023 has been a good one. It's been a lot of interesting stuff in gaming. You and I have both. We had some plans that came to fruition and, and some that did not. Uh, and uh, I think we have a lot to look forward to. And we'll do some forecasting as to, like, formally what we hope for and what we are planning to do with the show. We're going to do that in our next episode. Yep, so look forward to seeing you then. All right. Thank you so much for listening. You can visit our show's homepage at anchor.fm slash fluff and crunch that's f-l-u-f-f-n-c-r-u-n-c-h we would really appreciate feedback and reviews on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to this on thanks so much